I'm Brett Mahanathan, the Chief Financial Officer at Lions Cricket and the DP World Wanderers Stadium. A privilege and honour to be part of such a distinguished profession which isn't just one of the best professions in the country but is now the best chartered accounting profession in the world. So it's just such an honour to be part of this organisation to have the CASA designation behind my name. So for me it, it just shows testament to what we go through as CAs. It's not an easy one night journey, it's a long seven year journey if all things go to plan. And that builds resilience. I think when people go through it from your studies to your articles, you feel why, why am I doing this? What is the benefit gonna be out of, of this? But once you accomplish that, then the world is your oyster. It opens so many doors and it gives you something that is incomparable to a lot of other professions and something that separates us that we can be so proud of as one of the most distinguished professions in the country. Yeah, I just took it in my stride. I mean, um, I've always said I've done all the hard work. Now I take my CFO hat off and today I put my salesman hat on just to sell myself, but for me, it is what it is. Um, it's my story, I own my story, and um, yeah, it was about me presenting myself. So I actually enjoyed the experience. I think uh, one of the, uh, me being the joker, the first thing they said to me when I walked in the room, there was a lady at the back that said, uh, please, you must speak loudly so that everyone could hear. I said, no, maybe you should listen louder so that uh, you can hear me. And I think that was nice to break the ice. Thank you. I mean, thank you for doing what you're doing for our profession, doing what you're doing for our country, because this is making our country stronger. And sometimes us as South Africans, we may feel that we are potentially inferior to others, but Vaisaka being number one in the world shows that we've got the best of the best. Yes, we've got load shedding, there's issues in our country, but we must never take for granted the professional skills that we've got. And Saika has allowed us to have one of the most reputable professions in the world, which has opened doors that I would never have imagined when I first took on this uh, CASA route. So just a thank you and um, keep up the great work. So this is a phenomenal journey and I encourage everyone to apply. If anything, you'll learn to understand the processes that goes behind Saika. But for me, the biggest thing I've got from this is not about trying to win this competition. For me, all of us are winners. And the biggest win for me is just interacting with all these phenomenal individuals and understanding all our different backgrounds and how just something as a CASA designation can open so many, so many doors. And all of us coming from different journeys have accomplished so much. And for me, that's the greatest experience, just meeting all these lovely people and hearing all these stories, which just motivates me even more and just gives so much more confidence into the profession and the, and the route I decided to go on. So this one is actually very close to my heart. So I'm gonna, First mention our public benefit organisation and how we've uh, used that to uplift the community and then go into a little bit of a personal story. So uh, using the vehicle of sports, I'm the public officer of two PBOs. One is our Pink Day entity which focuses on uh, breast cancer awareness. So just on the Pink Day side, breast cancer awareness, we've organised uh, cancer awareness days where both men and women um, can do breast cancer checks. It was an eye-opening experience for me um, having to do my own checks but it was even funnier seeing Kakisha Rabada having to play with his breast to try to see if there's any lumps so um, that was great on the um, cancer awareness side. Uh, also on our PBO initiatives we've uh, had so many different initiatives but one memory that stands out was at the last Nelson Mandela day where we went out and we purchased mass products of beans, of samp, of um, pap, all types of uh, goods and um, we got all our cricketers, even the national captain, Timber Pavuma was there on the field, packing parcels and then handing those out to different communities and hubs and something as simple as um, having food parcels collected from the stadium every Friday for the young cricketers that have to play on the weekend because 
People don't realize that there's still such a disparity in sports and some of these young cricketers have to go to the field and have not had breakfast, do not know when their next meal's coming from, yet we must still expect high performance from them. So that was another initiative, is our Hungry Hearts Feeding Program. So that's on the PBI and the community side. And um, yeah, also on the community side, we've got this pre period freedom initiative where we are also raising um, sanitary pads, but also these uh, menstrual cups for period freedom to take into the townships and the communities. I mean, one of the biggest things we've learned is the amount of days a young girl in a township loses just from menstruation because she doesn't have the funds for pads or things like that. So focusing on all of those, but from a more personal perspective, I'm gonna now share just a short little journey of mine is that I've come from a journey of depression, addiction and mental health, uh, which consumed my life and I made the decision where if it wasn't for my parents having a spare key to my apartment, I probably wouldn't be here today. That's how deep things got and uh, I woke up that next day and decided to change my life around and I went into rehab, I started seeing counselling, I started addressing my mental health, my addiction um, and my depression and that was Five years, last Saturday, I've actually got it tattooed on my arm. 18 November 2018 was my first day of being clean and sober. And this last Saturday, 18 November 2023, was five years clean and sober. And having gone through that journey of hitting rock bottom and picking myself up, as soon as I made that decision for myself, my life changed. And I'm sitting here today after that. And part of our journey is giving back to staff and launching our wellness program. I've spoken to our staff about my journey with addiction and mental health, spoken to our cricketers and all our professional teams because mental health, depression, disorders doesn't discriminate. Everyone's going through something, no one's perfect. And my part of my way of giving back is sharing my story and being there for people who are going through the worst of the worst and sharing my story to give them hope that you can bounce back, you can be something of your life and it's all in your hands. And I've had lots of people where they come to me and share very personal stories. I'm sort of now the office counselor where people feel it's a safe space to come to my office because I was vulnerable enough to share my story. They now feel vulnerable to come to me for help when they need it. So that's probably one of the biggest things that I feel I've made a difference. What makes me a difference maker is the impact that I have not just on the cricket field with what's happening in our stadium, but more importantly off the field, is um, we're not just about creating good sportsmen on the field, but great human beings off it. And one of the biggest passions that I feel is a difference making is helping people survive through life and realizing that um, our employees aren't employees, they are first human beings and then the employer afterwards and just about touching lives, touching communities and using the vehicle of sport to this year change in the lives of ordinary South Africans to bring hope to the nation where previously there was despair.